Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another video. This time, Trails in the Sky, first chapter. Strange. I am By the way, I thought this old schoolhouse reminded me a lot of Trails of Gold Steel, where they had the, you know, uh, abandoned schoolhouse in, in, in the back of the, the school campus. I thought that was interesting. The little parallel in Liberal and uh, Erebonia where they had that. Couldn't be. So I think he he caught wind of that lieutenant, right? I think that's who he was tracking. I could be wrong. He says, hey, you too. Oh, Joshua went out on his own, right? Almost had a heart attack. When I heard you went chasing after some guy with silver hair. Yeah. So. As I said. I was spoiled a little bit about the story. But I believe. He was chasing him. Because that was another Ouro Ouroboros member. Um, that he knew. How did you know? Holly told us. Alright. But I guess I lost him. Oh, so this goes back to uh, what Cassie was saying. I mean, this you know, this is at the end of the game. Basically, Joshua's promise to Cassie is that if anything from his previous life crops back up, he will cut ties with his family, as as painful as it is, because he doesn't want to get them hurt. So, you know, that's that's why he's always looking a little weird about it. Any idea who he was? Afraid not. Why'd you run off by yourself? Could have at least left a message. Sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Who said I was worried? <laughs> Chloe calls her out. Not five minutes ago, you were in a total panic. I was not. Oh, and this is the start of the play, too, right? The play was certainly interesting. <laughs> Not really what something I want to talk about, though. But yeah, that, that was an interesting part of the... Kind of like the rock concert in, in one of the uh, Trails games. I forget which one. Was it the first one or the second one? No, the first one, right? Because the second one had uh, the schoolhouse. All right, on to the next one. And this is a short one. This is just um, the first meeting with uh, Tita, which I thought was because I didn't know, you know, how they first met, you know, playing the Cold Steel games. They, they were just really close with each other. And um, I, I thought it was, oh, jeez. I thought it was interesting, their, their interaction with each other. Like... Tita is definitely portrayed as one of those super smart engineers. Scientists, however you want to describe them. Got to hurry. Someone's coming. Oh. Oh. Good afternoon. Where's the fire? Good afternoon. Are you taking this road too? Have you seen any lights that weren't working? along the tunnel wall. I haven't noticed. But we did pass one that was flickering. That's it. Just like I thought. Sorry, I have to hurry. I think this and her repair of that, uh, that, uh, what is it? Outdoor sauna thing? It was interesting. Really highlights that she's like a mechanic, right? Wonder if she's some Zay Strange little kid. Now I'm kind of worried. You want to try following her? <laughs> Which I thought was hysterical. Uh, you know, maybe it's like a Japanese thing. Like, you know, maybe you follow people to help them. I mean, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, you see a little kid running around. You're like, are they okay? My thoughts exactly. We should catch up and stick close. So 
Yeah, I think I'll do this other scene too, just because. Oh, jeez. It kind of highlights. Um, it kind of highlights who Tita is. Because, you know, I kind of knew she was, you know, smart and engineer from the Cold Steel games, but I didn't know how much until. Um, I saw these scenes. Can't believe there's so many of them. It's gonna break. Maybe this. She's some kind of device. Angle of elevation 20 degrees. Orbital compression. Go. Ugh. If you come any closer, I won't miss next time. The monsters are like. Hmm. Hey, I remember you. We can talk later. We gotta get we gotta get rid of these things first. Um is it worth trying to kill these? Oh she has the uh oh no she doesn't. Chaos Brand. Best skill in the game. Thank you very much. I thought I was a goner. If I left them alone, they probably would have broken that light. Yeah, so it shows her priorities. Estelle, Joshua, and Tita. Computer database. They don't know what she's talking about. I just... Nothing special. I just fixed the cork connection. Adjusted the orbital pressure. Well, it sure sounds special. Then she has an explanation. Like engineers and scientists usually do. Maybe you should save the explanation for after we get on the road. So this is a good portrayal of Tina. Oh, this is when they have to infiltrate the fortress. So why did I want to highlight this? They'd be offended if I didn't kick their behinds. <laughs> Legally I should- <laughs> they make this sound so official. Yes, ma'am. So Tita wants to go. 
And Agate says, listen, Pipsqueak, I ain't hearing this. What are we supposed to do with the kid on a mission this dangerous? You need me. Then forget it. We'll find another way. And Estelle's like, why are you so stubborn? Tita's ready. She wants to help. All that improves our chances of getting the professor out safely. It's like, you little... Have you thought about her being a civilian and a kid? You're okay with putting her in danger? I don't like any more than you do, but we'll keep her safe. We're bracers. That's our job. It's like, you sure talk a big game for a rookie. What does experience that do? The bracers aren't the only ones who feel that some people are worth protecting. Sell Joshua. Sorry I make you so mad. But she just wants to get her grandpa back. Oh, sweetie. He'll let us slide. She's like, thank you, Agate. You got no reason to thank me. You fall behind, you get left behind. Sure, buddy. Just so you know. <laughs> By the goddess, you're a jerk. He's just the type who speaks colorfully when he's embarrassed. <laughs> They're odd to him. So yeah, I, you know, I know that uh, Ag Agate has like a, a younger daughter that reminds that uh, Tita reminds him of her. But I do not understand their relationship that much. Um, you know, there's the whole scene where he slaps her. Um, yeah, there's the whole scene where he slaps her. And, you know, I mean, you know, they, they like this game loves to do the, the big dramatics. Like, you know, obviously, you know, people can't kiss, you know, romantic feelings and all that. You know, people can't kiss, though, but they love slapping people. Or punching them to get their point across. <laughs> uh, all right, on to the next one. Okay. Now we jumped ahead to the final chapter: the Royal Guard, disguised as a nun. I'm Sister Ellen. the heck are these things? Yo, need a hand? Ah, this is where we met Sin. Why don't we deal with the guests first? Roger that. So yeah, meeting Zinn here was really cool. Uh, I, I thought he was a very interesting character. I really feel like there's more to him that's not explained in this first game. Um, but I think he's a cool character. The redhead meeting Agate. Hey, who's the pretty lady? <laughs> she with you? She single?
Just doing what comes naturally for a chivalrous man. He's funny. Then they meet the intelligence agents. Think you're terrorists. Josh was there to smooth it over. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to point this out as Zin's entrance. But yeah, it's not really nothing. It's not really anything special. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that these uh, intelligence soldiers who were probably Jaegers before were able to keep their composure this whole time. And act professionally. Who the hell do they think they are? So that's how it is, huh? Yeah, I thought the tournament it was really cool in this game. It was a really cool um, like activity. Like the play was okay, but the tournament really matched like you know Estelle as a fighter, um, Joshua's you know curiosity of uh, the lieutenant. Um, all of it was cool. It was well done. All right, let's do it. We're still one person short, and we all know it was going to be Olivier. Wasn't he in this inn, listening to this? I wish Cheryl was here. There he is. Uh, to the pervert stage left. <laughs> Why well, should I sit down? Olivier Lenheim. You have a lot of spare time on your hands. So yeah, this this setup with Olivier and Zen and Zen being. Uh, told by their father to watch out for them. It, it was all well done. I really like, you know, this whole story segment. Oh, he could tell he uses a horrible gun. That's how the team formed. <laughs> A 
Look at he's kind of a glutton. to the next one. Is this... Oh, this is the sneaking out. I thought this was pretty cool to the whole secret escape from um, the hotel. I mean, stealth missions are really never that fun, but... I thought the conversation with um, the Royal Guards woman was pretty cool. No, this is... Oh. Oh!
<laughs> Make it easier and easier. And he thought it was the lieutenant. Well, from Ouroboros. And <laughs> Estelle's always oblivious. Oh, do I have that scene when they rescue her? That I hope I have that one. Oh, this is where they get the big mission to talk to the queen. Hilda. Yeah, they don't know that she's talking about Chloe. The Divine Blade, Cassius Bright. City Guard. Oh, this is where they make the promise, right? Let's rest here for a moment. This is their spot. I wonder if they're going to return here at uh, um, chapter 2. No, second chapter. Lieutenant Schwartz. She wasn't the one you were expecting. Well, he doesn't want to explain.
this this whole scene, I'll I'll admit is cute. Um. Nothing happens without a reason or a motive or an excuse. Tricking myself into accepting things I can't change, but even so, grateful for having the sky, dad, but most of all you. Ah. <laughs> So I promise, once this is all settled, I'll tell you everything there is to know about my past. But the stars is my witness. <laughs> she gets really fired up from that. Then I'll tell you what I've got to tell you. <laughs> Timing is crucial. Situation does feel kind of right, but not yet. They're alone together. Ready to take on the world because we have a talk planned. <laughs> I'm not letting these guys keep me from this talk. Girl power. It's the first time he laughed like that. So yeah, that was that was a great scene. You yo, we're here to save your bacon. I never thought I'd see you. This scene is pretty funny. You're the princess. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> he's a little late, little late for introductions. So we meet again, as promised. Um, Chloe. Sincerely, <laughs> you're joking. <laughs> You ought to recognize me sooner. Not with the dress and the hair and the things. What happened? Pardon us, Chloe. Stell doesn't know how to doubt people. <laughs> Stell is still confused. Okay, so what are you doing here, Chloe? Why isn't the princess here? But <laughs> Why would the princess be hiding out in an ordinary school? Chloe is a pet name that Jill came up with. And what about your hair? Oh, it's just a wig. I think I've seen enough of this little farce. The General's Granddaughter.
Pathetic, disgusting, sick. Pick an adjective. Oh, I'm afraid that won't be happening. Who the hell do you think you are? Some people just have no matters. Olivier, I guess. Bingo. Star makes his dramatic entrance. You've only become more beautiful. Am I suddenly brimming over with something like jealousy? <laughs> I have committed a grave offense. Traveling musician. Her Highness, Prince Claudia. That was a good scene. And then after this is really just the the last few missions, I believe. Alright, moving on to the next one.